At Sana'a International Airport, an ominous silence. Terminals are as empty of people as runways are devoid of planes. Clear signs that the crisis in Yemen is only growing more dire. Sana'a International Airport was completely brought to a halt by the warring coalition states that included preventing the UN airplanes, humanitarian aid, the Red Cross and Doctors Without Borders. But airport officials aren't just angry with the parties to the conflict. The United Nations could have taken brave and clear decisions to condemn the aggression. The UN could have compelled the belligerent states to allow at least humanitarian aid to arrive and to allow access to the injured, casualties and humanitarian cases. For its part, the UN has warned that in Yemen, which is in the grips of a cholera epidemic that has seen more than 900,000 suspected cases since April, is also facing the world's worst famine crisis. One that could kill millions of people unless the Saudi-led military coalition ends its blockade and allows aid to flow into the country. Saudi Arabia imposed a land and sea blockade in Yemen after a ballistic missile was fired on Saturday towards its capital, Riyadh. Since then, it has only become more difficult for citizens to get their hands on vital commodities, with prices of petrol and cooking oil rising drastically. In the port city of Hodeida, humanitarian access was already difficult for aid agencies. Now, it's only got worse. And so far as closing down the ports and borders, these are war crimes in the first degree. At the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in Sana'a, Officials are extremely concerned of what will happen if they can't continue to bring food into the country. You know that Yemen is the largest food insecurity crisis all over the world. Every month we feed 7 million people. These are people who depend completely on relief aid for their survival. And we import these commodities, the food, to help these people. Which is why the longer Yemen's air and sea ports sit empty, the longer the suffering will continue. Mohammed Jamjoum, Al Jazeera.